so hello guys so today we'll be dealing about the history in microbiology so when we say about history we mainly focus on the main scientist that has contributed a lot in the field of microbiology okay so basically there are six scientists that we have to be dealt about in this chapter so let us take it first so the first two one firstly we have to change the rules so the first scientist is none other than Anton Von Leeuwen Hook okay and then one Leeuwen Hook he is the one who identified or who find in a way innovated symbol microscope okay so simple microscope has been founded by uh, Anton von Leeuwenhoek. We already studied in the plus one subject in biology. So Anton von Leeuwenhoek found out small things under the simple microorganism, under the simple microscope. So he termed them as little animals. The next scientist we had to study about is none other than the famous Lewis Pasteur. So Louis Pasteur has contributed a lot into the field of microbiology. So there is about six innovations I think. So firstly his innovation include vaccination. The first vaccination has been found out by the Louis Pasteur. Okay so he had found out vaccine for mainly three bacteria that are known as car vaccine. C for cholera. F for anthrax. And R for rubella. Okay, these are the car vaccines are the vaccine found out by Louis Pasteur. The second innovation by Louis Pasteur is nothing other than what sterilization. We already heard about pasteurization. See, so pasteurization is a uh, is a method in sterilization. Under sterilization, he is innovated three sterilization techniques. So the first two one is pasteurization. We already know. So what is pasteurization? Pasteurization is nothing but uh, sterilization of uh, food and uh, beverage, food beverages and milk covers etc. Okay, like Milma pack etc. are coming to us by pasteurization. Okay, so the pasteurization mainly done by two methods. One is the Holder's method. Holder's method. Another one is the Flash method. So in the name itself it indicates that it we have to hold it about for 30 minutes under 63 degrees Celsius okay but in flash method only 20 second but the temperature about 72 degrees Celsius we have to use about 72 degrees Celsius so you see here 30 minutes has to be kept about under 63 degrees Celsius and here 20 seconds only this is seconds okay but 72 degrees Celsius but you see in flash method it is just a flash about 20 seconds but in holders method we have to hold it about 30 minutes and in flash method we use a 72 degrees Celsius so almost kills all but here kills all except what coxiella burnati okay coxiella burnati mm. in holders method kills all except coxiella burnati the second sterilization technique that innovated by Louis Pasteur is nothing other than the famous autoclave we already know what you mean by autoclave is right autoclave is nothing but uh, like a pressure cooker you see we put instruments that has to be sterilized under a, a closed chamber with a pressure about 15 psi pound pressure okay 15 pound psi so 15 so we use this here 15 pound psi pressure about 15 minutes at a temperature of 121 degrees celsius so these are the okay autoclave techniques we have to use about 15 psi pound pressure and 15 minutes at a temperature of 121 degrees celsius the next third third method under sterilization that has introduced by louis pasteur is nothing other than hot air oven 
you see hot air oven is the, its name itself indicates that we have to pass air continuously hot air warm air continuously under a oven like a chamber where the instrument has been kept but here we have to uh, we have to keep the chamber at a temperature of 160 degrees celsius and we have to keep the instrument about two hours okay 160 degrees celsius two hours so these are the three methods under sterilization what are pasteurization autoclave and hot air oven so the third innervation by louis pasteur is nothing other than what fermentation Fermentation is very important under classification and identification of bacteria. So you see fermentation is nothing other than what this mean by fermentation is that utilization utilization of carbohydrate under anaerobic condition. Okay, utilization of carbohydrate under anaerobic condition is fermentation. So there will be byproduct under fermentation. The byproduct include can be acid, can be gas. You see, if uh, for example, uh, if lactose fermentation, there will be lactic acids, right? So if there is acid, there will be we use a pH indicator in culture media to identify whether there had produced acid or not. And we use uh, Durham's tube. Durham's tube to identify whether the gas had produced or not. So what is the importance of fermentation is that importance we can identify and differentiate microorganism. Okay. So you see, we can identify and differentiate. For example, if it takes lactose as the sugar which we produce, which we uh, given in the culture media, then the, if it was a lactose fermenter bacteria, it will produce lactic acid, right? So it will produce what? Under the pH indicator, it will produce pink colored colony. But if it was a non-lactose fermenter, no color. Okay? And if we take an example as maltose, there is maltose fermentes, non-maltose fermentes, okay. For example, maltose fermentes, Neisseria species. Neisseria, in Neisseria species, Neisseria meningitis. Meningitis, Neisseria meningitis is a maltose fermentes, okay. But non-maltose fermentes, Neisseria gonorrhea okay Neisseria gonorrhea which produces uh, infection in cervix okay but in Neisseria meningitis produce uh, inflammation in under meninges of prey so you see we can from fermentase we can identify and classify so you see it is for example if a bacteria is lactose fermentase and non-lactose fermentase we can identify if it was producing pink color then we can identify it as a lactose fermenter and if it was a non-lactose fermenter there will be no color and from within the same species we can identify the what uh, different strains of same species for example if it was Neisseria meningitis it is a maltose fermentase and it is if it is a Neisseria gonorrhea, it is a non-maltose fermentase. So this is the what third innovation by Louis Pasteur. Then the fourth innovation by Louis Pasteur is nothing other than okay, the fourth innovation by Louis Pasteur is germ theory of disease. It means the he, st he states that uh, germ theory of disease states that the disease is caused by germ. That's all. Then the fifth innovation by the Louis Pasteur is liquid culture media. Okay, in liquid culture media, what he done is that he used two test tube, uh, one test tube, and he given the test tube with a sample of carbohydrate, nutrients, sugars. The things that we have needed for a normal metabolic growth okay so he added sample in the culture media liquid culture media and then he find out the test tube become 
turbid so this turbidity indicates there is growing of bacteria so the taken sample has grown in abundant in the culture media so he is the first to introduce the liquid culture media who louis pasteur so these are the five innovations of louis pasteur so next scientist is none other than our famous robert koch let us get into third scientist robert koch he is famous for koch postulate okay so he is also known as what father of bacteriology so he is the first one to what demonstrate or he is the first one to isolate bacteria he isolated bacteria for the first time so he isolated bacteria known are cat bacteria so cat c for cholera f for bacillus anthracis anthracis and t for our famous tb bacillus tb along with mycobacterium tuberculosis okay so he is the first one to isolate bacteria then the second innovation by our famous robert koch is none other than the important culture media that is solid culture media solid culture media the liquid culture media is done by louis pasteur and the solid culture media is done by who our famous robert koch so you see uh, here the important is that in solid culture media it has many advantages uh, when we compared with the liquid culture media because in solid culture media we can cultivate many different strains of bacteria in a simple culture but in liquid culture media we cannot do that so if we select a different samples and put it around here we will get different colors and different shape of colonies okay different shapes and different types of colonies according to the sample of bacteria so we can identify which bacterial strain is there also we can cultivate different sample of bacteria in a simple culture petri dish okay so that is he used agar as the culture media so so the second innovation by him is the solid culture media then the third innovation by our famous robert koch is nothing other than hanging drop method hanging drop method you see hanging drop method is a microscopic technique where we can differentiate or we, we can demonstrate the motility of a organism we can appreciate here motility so what we here do is that we take what a slide with the slide here will have a central depression okay there will be a depth in the slide and then there is the cover slip so what we do is that we take a culture sample this is the culture sample and we take and put a drop of culture sample at the center of cover slip and we then add oil droplets around the four corners of the cover slip and then we invert here invert above the slide so this is the cover slip here are the oil which is help in addition to the uh, slide and then there is the hanging drop of sample so you see we can demonstrate the movement of bacteria in the hanging droplets here under microscopy for example salmonella salmonella when we do by this method we can see serpentine motility salmonella show sir in motility like a snake okay so what salmonella shows serpentine motility then the fourth innovation by him is our famous staining method so robert koch has done many innovation in bi uh, microbiology so the fourth one is the staining method he used first staining method is demonstrated by robert koch and he used aniline dyes okay aniline dyes is nothing other than basic dyes so uh, what he find out by staining is that we can uh, we can show the organism with increased contrast and has increased visibility visibility of the inner structures okay so these are the important 
thing about staining method which will increase the contrast and there will be increased visibility so these are the fourth innovation by robert coach then the again then the next uh, innovation by him is the famous coach postulate so there are four postulate under the coach postulate and uh, one newly added postulate is there and there is also known as other postulate called the molecular coach postulate so there is totally six postulate but the four one is the originally defined by him and there is newly added one that is the fifth postulate and then there is molecular coach postulate okay so the first postulate says about human that is nothing other than what to call a microorganism is a disease causing organism then it should cause the same disease in all human beings by the same organism okay so it will be constantly associated with the same disease to call a organism is disease causing organism then it should constantly associated with the same disease that means it will cause the same disease in all human beings so that what the first postulate says about it talks about human so if an organism is causing a disease in human then it should be constantly this is important constantly associated with the same disease So this is the first coach postulate. The second coach postulate tell about culture. Sorry, the second coach coach postulate tells about culture media. That is, we should able to culture. We should able to isolate the organism from the human patient and able to culture it. That what the second postulate says. That is, you should be able to isolate. the organism in pure culture this is important okay pure culture then the third postulate talks about lab animals that means if we injected the uh, pure culture media of that organism into lab animals it should causes the same disease as it caused in human that was the third postulate tells about okay should develop okay then the fourth postulate is nothing other than again culture talks about culture that is you should able to re isolate the same organism from the lab animals and should able to culture it again in pure culture media so pure culture media should be pure culture media okay then the third, fourth one says about you should able to re isolate the same organism in pure culture so you see there is a sequence right first we talk about human that means it should able to cause the same disease in whole human then you should able to culture it in a culture pure culture media then if we inject it in lab animals it should cause the same disease then from again from lab animals we should able to re isolate and culture it again in a pure culture media okay so these are the first four postulate introduced by coach then there is newly added postulate okay that is modified coach postulate newly added postulate is there it is called what about talks about immune response you see we already know we should be able to identify or we should be able to demonstrate the antibodies produced in patient against that organism so that is the fifth postulate tells about immune response that is you should able to demonstrate antibodies against organism in patient so these are the this is modified one on modified one this is a modified coach postulate you see these are the five coach postulate then there is another coach postulate is known as molecular coach postulate
Molecular coach postulates says that the virulent gene, we already know the virulent gene present in an organism is responsible for the disease causing. Okay, so to talk about virulent gene. Virulent gene in organism is responsible for the disease. So you see these are the five coach postulate plus the molecular coach postulate okay hello? then you should uh, you should know that there is some uh, organism that is non cultural okay so that will will not come under the uh, will not specify the robert coach postulate because uh, there are some organism which we cannot culture so there is non culturable bacteria for example there are hmm. There are non-culturable bacteria. So first one is nothing other than our Trypanema pallidum. We already know Trypanema pallidum is the one which causes syphilis, right? You see syphilis. Trypanema pallidum causes syphilis. Then there is mycobacterium lepre. Causes leprosy. Trypanema pallidum causes syphilis. Leprosy causes lepre. Lepre causes leprosy. Then there is rickettsia causes rickets and fourth one is the chlamydia chlamydia causes what pneumonia conjunctivitis many other symptoms many other uh, diseases okay chlamydia is a vast specific range disease causing organism so you see these are the five postulates by robert coach plus molecular coach postulate and there is non-cultural bacteria which is not come under the robert coach postulate okay so these are the five innovations of robert coach then we talk about our fourth scientist paul ehrlich you already heard about him in our chemistry i think uh, in second year cbsc uh, plus two cbsc textbook chemistry textbook i think firstly we heard about what paul ehrlich he is the first one to uh, demonstrate or first one to demonstrate antibiotics and the first antibiotics founded by him is known as salverson which is treatment in trypanema pallidum infection that is in syphilis okay so the paul ehrlich ehrlich is known as father of chemotherapy okay because why because he is the first one to first antibiotics the first one to introduce antibiotic and the first antibiotic is called was salverson salverson for what trypanema pallidum that goes syphilis so the first innovation by paul ehrlich is the antibiotic then the second innovation by him is the famous acid first stain okay acid first chain the acid first chain was invented by paul herlich but later it is modified and make it as zn chain okay so zn chain is introduced by zin and nilsen uh, it is also a type of acid first chain but it is modified version so first to introduce the acid first chain is by paul herlich then later it is modified as zn chain by zin and nilsen okay then the third innovation by Paul Ehrlich is nothing other than he is the one who standardized standardized toxin and antitoxin. And then there goes our fifth famous scientist, he is Joseph Lister. He is the father of antiseptic surgery. Andy, sorry is the father of aseptic surgery and aseptic means septic against you know aseptic surgery aseptic surgery so what he done is that he used five percentage carbolic acid which is the famous phenolic acid right phenolic acid is the carbolic acid right so he used five percent carbolic acid in surgical instrument so you see, uh, so in order to prevent post-surgery infections, so he used 5% carbolic acid in surgical instruments. So that side is known as father of aseptic surgery. Then there is our sixth and last scientist that is Ignaz, Ignaz Zemi Samuel Wiesen. Sorry, the spelling is not like that. Ignaz 
semel v's okay so ignaz semel v's is the one who introduced the famous hand washing technique surgical hand washing technique was introduced by ignaz semel vision which we uses now broadly due to covid okay so these are the six scientists that we have to deal about the first one is hanter von leeuwenhoek who found out the simple microscope then second one is louis pasteur he is the one who uh, firstly introduced the vaccination the sterilization technique that is pasteurization autoclave and hot air oven then the fermentation technique which used to identify and differentiate bacteria then the germ theory of disease then liquid culture media then the, our third scientist is robert koch he is the one firstly isolated bacteria that is known as cat bacteria then he is the first one to introduce solid agar culture i think mean, solid culture media then he is the first to demonstrate hanging drop method so and staining method he used aniline dyes and then the next one is the coach postulate there are six postulate totally five postulate and one is the molecular coach postulate then the fourth scientist is paul ehrlich paul ehrlich is the first one to introduce antibiotic it is known as salvarsan against syphilis then acid first staining was introduced by paul ehrlich and the standardization of toxin and antitoxin then joseph fischer is known as father of Optic surgery because he used five percentage carbolic acid in surgical instrument in order to prevent the post surgery infections. Okay, so then the sixth one is the Ignaz Semmelweis, which one introduced the famous surgical hand wash technique. So that's all. See you in the next chapter.